and the Reform UK leader Richard Tice has proposed a rise in employers' national insurance when hiring foreign workers as well. So that one's quite interesting and it'll be it'll be fascinating to see how that goes down. Um, I think it was a pretty packed press conference. I wasn't there, but I watched it online and they had Farage speaking and they unveiled this policy, which is essentially to tax employers for taking on foreign workers as opposed to people that are already in this country on the basis that, you know, we have a huge pool of uh, untapped labour pool here and also that the huge number of uh, extra people coming into the country is having such a undisputed now, I think, effect on public services and particularly on housing. So the policy is geared at employers, not on the workers themselves. And that's pretty important. Otherwise, I think it would have been a very controversial move, you know, tax on foreigners kind of thing. Um, and uh, crucially, I think that they've done an exemption on health and social care sector, um, which seems, again, an important uh, group to carve out of that policy. Um, it was interesting to hear the, the questions from the various journalists at the press conference and how they were going to frame it. And there was a, a very quick thinking reporter from the Mirror newspaper who piped up that lots of Indian restaurants, I'm not making this up by the way, you're, you're wondering where this is going. Is like, Indian restaurants, they employ a lot of foreign workers, they employ a lot of Indian workers. Yes, who'd have thought? So is this a curry tax? Brilliant. And I slightly have my head in my hands thinking, oh my gosh, is this going to catch on? Do you remember the pasty tax? Yes, I remember um, the pasty tax, yes. I'm sure there have yes. been other ones. You know, once you give something a label, mm. there's been a death tax before in yes, an election Yes, dementia campaign. tax, yeah, and as well. I yeah. thought, well, I wonder whether this is going to get any traction. And I sort of looked at Nigel Farage and thought, how is he going to answer that one? Yes. Um, because it had trouble written all over it. And he started sort of waffling on a bit about how much he likes a curry whilst <laughs> buying time to think of an answer. Um, and I think the answer was basically that Nigel Farage likes curry, so it's not a curry tax. I think there's one demographic demographic group that's really going to worry about the, uh, the curry tax. Mm. Nans. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, has anyone given you a proper job in stand-up? <laughs> let's see what Nigel Farage was saying earlier on at this reform press conference. Let's hear a little clip from him. Conservatives will be in opposition, but they won't be the opposition. They can't be the opposition. They don't agree on anything. The party is completely split. It serves no real purpose of any kind at this moment in time. And worth remembering, they've spent much of the last four years, in fact, they've spent more time in the last four years fighting each other than they have standing up fighting for the interests of the country. And in opposition, they'll be even worse. They pretty much all hate each other. They won't be an opposition. I mean, it, it's hard to disagree with I much, of, say, much of I that. Mean, he's, he's not wrong, is he? No, I mean, they not. pretty much all hate each other is where things are at. They do pretty much all hate each other. He was saying they'll be in opposition, but they won't be the opposition. Um, and I'm remembering back to the, you probably remember this too, back to the years after sort of early 2000s. You know, you, you might think that the lowest point for the Conservatives was actually after 1997. But in some ways, the darkest days were kind of 2001, mm, 2002. Mm. I think this was Ian Duncan Smith type era. And the party just did not know where it was going. And I remember there was sort of existential talk. You know, will the Tory party ever recover? Yeah. And it may be that the Conservative Party does find itself in that kind of feeling of a sort of death spiral mm. after this, this election. Or could it be that actually the gap won't be quite as narrow, quite as wide uh, as uh, pollsters have predicted or as polls are suggesting now, and that come polling day, especially if there's a bit more chaos in the Labour Party, uh, actually Starmer's gamble of going early uh, has in some ways contained or limited the damage. I don't think anyone is saying, and Sir John Curtis is saying, 99% sure that Sir Keir Starmer will be in Downing Street. The question for Sunak is to what extent has he limited the losses? You mentioned that time, uh, the dark days for the Conservative Party, perhaps further dark days are coming. And actually, I, as you know, I worked as a Conservative Special Advisor for three and a half years and I heard a brilliant story from around the time you referenced there, mm. which was their Christmas party. Huh. And a, a man went up and said, I'm just going into the Christmas party. This was in the Conservative Party headquarters, uh, which was then in Smith Square. 
uh, in London, and he said, I'm just going into the party, and the uh, bouncer, uh, doorman, said, I'm sorry, sorry, I need to see your invitation. And the man said, well, I don't have an invitation, but I'm just, I'm just going in, I'm just going to go in. He says, well, what's your name? Give him his name. He says, sorry, your name's not on the list, you're not going in. At which point he said, well, my name's Ian Duncan Smith, and oh, I am the leader of the Conservative gosh. Party. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and he was probably, there weren't that many people at the party anyway. Well, that's so. right, that's right. It <laughs> you know, was that, that element. Him, well, I mean. well, indeed, absolutely. Um, Jason has been in touch on text and says, Peter, you need to start writing Christmas cracker jokes. They literally mm. are that bad. Mm. Um, let's talk a little bit about Labour's policy. I'm they want seeing to... headlines, your nan won't like it. Well, in, well yes, thanks, absolutely. Thanks for that. I'm yeah, sure I've... that the Reform Party will be thrilled. I, I, like, to, I like to contribute <laughs> to the national debate. Um, uh, Labour is saying they want a Blair-style approach to cracking down on crime. We're talking to the crime uh, mm. minister, policing minister, a minute ago, um, Chris Philp, and he's obviously sceptical about those plans. But certainly, Labour are saying that the sort of visible crime is something they need to crack down on the community side of things. Will that make a difference to this campaign? Do you think? I mean, everyone wants to hear that, don't they? But does anyone believe that it will happen in the short term? And I know they're talking about, well, they're probably referencing petty crime as much as the really big stuff. And there definitely is a sense, I think, in, in this country, in, even in the last few weeks, that there has been a kind of crazy escalation in apparently arbitrary violent crime. You mm. know, the kind of violent you know, drive-by shootings well, we that we've heard that, about. Well, we saw in the last 24 hours. Stabbings yeah. on Bournemouth Beach, stabbings on the streets of London. There's always been violent crime, of course there has, but there is a feeling now that something is in the air, that things are in some way spiralling out of control, and I think it's linked to all sorts of things, but, you know, huge backlogs in the criminal justice system, mm. which are certainly not acting t as a deterrent to anyone who is thinking about criminality at the moment. You know, they know that it will be a long, long time before anything is done if they are caught and actually processed, and the chances of them going to prison at the moment, yeah. unless they do something truly heinous, are actually quite low. Well, we'll see what happens, uh, certainly over the, not just in the longer term, but also over the course of this campaign. Isabel, thank you very much indeed. Our international 